Hello, and welcome to Your Vote Counts, a public informational nonpartisan program designed to get the public acquainted with the candidates vying for the 2022 general election races of congressional districts, Senate districts 10 and 11, House districts 7 through 23. Salem City Council and Marion County Commissioners. These interviews come to you through the producers of Capital Community Media. Collaboration on questions and moderators are from the American Association of University Women, Salem City Club, and the League of Women Voters of Marion and Polk Counties. All 27 candidates for these races were invited and all but six chose to participate. Candidates did not receive the questions prepared by the League of Women Voters ahead of time. Candidates were invited to prepare a two minute opening address addressing their background and qualifications for the office and a two minute closing addressing their goals for the office if elected. I am Joyce Zook from the American Association of University Women, and I would like to introduce to you Mark Wig, who is running for the Marion County Commissioner. Candidate Wig, welcome, and we look forward to your opening remarks. Thanks, Joyce. Um, I really appreciate what the League of Women Voters are doing um, and that they're getting the word directly to the people from the candidates. That's a wonderful thing. We need that. Um, I have uh, been in Marion County for about 40 years. I have experience uh, working with the USDA Forest Service, um, planting trees, setting up timber sales, uh, fighting wildfires. I uh, spent uh, more than a decade working on Oregon Department of Transportation projects. I was the major projects environmental manager. I handled most of the largest projects, transportation projects in the state. These included things like the Newburgh Dundee bypass, widening I-5 in Salem, the I-5-217 interchange project, multiple projects of that size, billion dollar projects. Um, and then I also have worked with the Oregon Department of Forestry on software projects. In addition to that, I've been a volunteer with local organizations like uh, Salem Audubon Society, Society of American Foresters, and my neighborhood association. And I am vice president of the Northwest Land Conservation Trust. Uh, we have conservation easements in the Salem area. So I have uh, a really broad background and I would encourage people to find out more about me by going to Elect Mark Wig either at Facebook or electmarkwig.com or on Instagram. And you will see, um, I've been trying to show people what I'm about, who I am. And uh, I think you will find out more about me from those uh, different uh, media sources. Thank you, candidate Mark Wig. And now we will want to hear views on our question for this interview. On number one, uh, what issues do you think are unique to Marion County and which are you especially concerned about? Well, I don't know that these issues are unique to Marion County, um, but some of the issues that I am very focused on right now are um, our homeless citizens need compassionate help. Uh, everybody I've talked to, I've done a lot of campaigning, talked to a lot of people. I haven't found anybody that thinks chasing the homeless from one place to another is a solution to the homeless crisis. And um, so I want to help establish safe, sanitary, managed campgrounds. I just had a conversation with um, Corey Poole out at Paradise Island uh, Mobile Home Park, and he has found... Uh, he told me about three different uh, fires started by unmanaged homeless camps. 
So wildfire is a big concern also. And unmanaged homeless camps kind of merges into that. We will have wildfires starting in homeless camps. We have had wildfires starting in homeless camps. So compassion for the homeless will help the homeless. It will also help with our um, uh, employers. Employers desperately are seeking employees. And we have hundreds of people out there that would that are fully capable of working, but they need a safe sanitary campground or some safe living condition so that they can go to work. We don't have that. And so I want to help in that situation. I want to help reduce the number of fires and the damage from wildfires. Um, we have um, we just received a newsletter from the uh, Marion County Commissioners, and they blame uh, their solution to the fires is to clear cut the national forests. Um, nobody I know that has any scientific background would agree with that. Um, what we can do is 70% of our fires are started by people. Let's lower that. Let's reduce the fires. Let's bring back Smokey Bear. Make sure everybody knows about fire safety. The other thing is that if you really want to protect your home, you can build a home that is more fire safe. Almost 90% of the homes could have been uh, protected from fire in 2020 if they had been fire safe construction and the lands around them were managed, the immediate lands around them were managed in a, in a better way. So we have fire, we have homeless, we have jobs. Jobs, I see um, both, uh, we can uh, everybody that I talk to, again, that's an employer, needs employees. We can provide employees both by having um, uh, safe living conditions for the homeless, because especially if we did something out in the industrial parks, it's away from the neighbors, it's near the jobs. Let's put homeless uh, managed campgrounds out there in industrial zones, and then they can walk to work. Amazon is always hiring. Most of those places have, we're hiring today, signs on them. So, hey, we have employees that are ready to go. They just need a safe place to do it. All right, thank you. A few years ago, changes were made in public health operations. What does public health look like now in Marion County and what else needs to be done? Well, a, a few years ago, um, they cut um, vaccination services, uh, services for uh, sexually transmitted infections and contraceptive services and uh, in our county. And um, they have restored vaccinations, um, uh, but they have not restored contraceptive services. Um, so I know that my opponent is, um, he was political director for Oregon Right to Life. He's very much opposed to women having the freedom to choose to have an abortion and to manage their pregnancy. But the idea of cutting contraceptive services, well, if you don't want unwanted pregnancies, help people avoid unwanted pregnancies. Um, right now, their complete contra, you know, contraceptive service program is a box of condoms outside the window at their health department. That's it. We can do a lot better than that. Let's help women avoid unwanted pregnancies. Okay. Uh, the next question is, uh, what changes have been put into place to ensure election integrity? and ease of access. What do you want the public to know about elections? I, um, we have a very fair and competent elections division. We get our ballots in the mail. We can fill those out and put them in a mailbox, you know, and they will be counted and it will not be something that um, we have to worry about fraud and those kind of things. We have very good election services. 
and the people there are very honest and fair. I have no doubt that the elections that go on in this county will be honest, fair, and competently run. Thank you, Mark. Uh, the next one, discuss public work plans for waste disposal and public education on waste reduction. Um, Marion County is um, uh, burns a large portion of our garbage in the uh, burner out in Brooks, Covanta burner. Uh, we have not done substantial testing of the emissions from that burner. We know for sure that when you burn garbage, you're gonna emit a, a large amount of CO2. Hey, we're having a climate crisis. Why are we burning garbage? Um, but the other thing I see is that we need to have that backup plan right now. We need to know, hey, if we do the testing and find out Covanta is poisoning our children and ourselves, well, then we need to shut it down immediately. But you have to have the backup plan set up so you can shut it down. And we need to do that. Now, we also need to expand what we're doing for recycling. We um, There are other places that are doing it better. What I look at is who is doing a better job of recycling and waste reduction. And let's see if we can imitate those programs. Let's bring those programs here. I'm always looking for, and the good thing about America is there are hundreds of different people trying hundreds of different things. Let's find who's the most successful and then imitate that program. Okay. Uh, you mentioned the carbon emissions uh, from the plant. Now, how is the county implementing uh, carbon emissions reduction overall? The county, the county doesn't have a climate action plan. They, I don't, I haven't seen anything that talks about climate change and carbon emissions. Um, they, I don't know what they're thinking, but I think most of the world now has gotten past the point of climate change denial. Rarely are you hearing that, especially after we've had the summers of 117 degrees, we've had droughts, we've had fires, we've had um, the extremes in climate are hitting us and slapping up upside the head and saying, you have to change. It's an emergency. It's not something that we can wait 10 years to do. We need to do things now. Um, Mark, what is your experience in working with diverse groups? How would you bring a broader based process into the county planning and decision making? Well, um, almost all the, pro all the jobs I've had have involved teams. And such as when I was working on the Newburgh Dundee bypass, the first uh, kickoff meeting, we had 32 different agencies at the table. And we need to, what my job was to make sure the whole team is working together for a common goal. We listen to people, we try to implement what everybody wants. But it's a matter of working with a broad variety of people. Now, I've worked on um, most of the larger projects I work on. Uh, we have environmental justice issues where we have to make sure that um, minority communities are involved in the in these projects. And it's not just a matter of saying on a website, hey, come. No, we have to do better outreach. We actually have to go out and meet people and talk to them. And that's one of the things I've been finding with my campaigning is that um, I enjoy learning by listening. And um, I think that we need more of that on the commission. Okay. Uh, what grants or other resources, uh, revenue options are available to the county to address infrastructure needs? And what needs would be your priorities? Well, um, there are numerous grants out there. I had just heard, uh, somebody told me that the county rejected more than a million dollars in housing assistance from the federal government and sent the money back to the feds. 
Um, we're in a housing crisis. We can't be doing that. I just heard from somebody today that Hooding River Council has the money and the backing to go ahead and remove a dam on the Pudding River. But the commissioner said, oh, no, we don't want to do that. It might set a precedent of dam removal. Um, it, we need to look for those dollars and then use those dollars. There are housing dollars. There are dollars to help with environmental mitigation. Let's pursue that money and then implement it. We have a lot of money available for implementing community solar and also for emergency services. We're not using that sufficiently. I see we're coming to the end of our time here. So candidate Mark Quigg, you are now invited to share your two minute closing comments about your goals for this office if elected. Well, my goal is to bring new perspectives and really push for moving the county forward. Ultimately, I see that um, I am working towards more joy and more beauty in our county. I think we need to have that sort of a goal. Um, I was just at Oktoberfest. You want to see a joyful place? Oktoberfest, plenty of joy there. And the beauty that we have in our environment, in our natural areas, let's protect it. Let's enhance it. We can do those things. And so that is, you know, what, what I am working for is a county that thrives sustainably and that is filled with that joy and beauty of people living compassionately with each other, helping each other and prospering. We can do that. We should be doing that. And right now, I think with three commissioners, all Republicans, all thinking alike, you don't have to have much thinking going on when everybody thinks alike. We need to have other people at the table encouraging people to think a little broader, to try new things. That's why I'm running. Thank you, candidate Mark Wig, for your interview today and for sharing your thoughts. Thank Thanks you, to Capital Community Media for their extensive technology and producer skills used to create this program. Thank you to the League of Women Voters of Marion and Hope Counties for the design and preparation of the program and to AAUW Salem City Club for help with the question development and providing moderators. And thanks to you, the public, for watching in order to become an informed voter. For more local, state, and national voter information on candidates and ballot issues, visit, in all caps, VOTE411.org. You have until October 18th to register to vote or make changes. Ballots go out October 19th or 20th, and are according to and according to a new law, will be accepted and counted if postmarked before or on November 8th. Elections matter. Remember to vote because your vote counts. <laughs> <laughs>